Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be quickly introducing Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens. So Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens is the next book in the Mega Dickens read-along. If you don't know what the Mega Dickens read-along is, I will leave more links down below, but basically the Mega Dickens read-along is a two-year-long read-along where we're reading all of Charles Dickens' novels in publication order. Dombey and Son is number seven, I think, um, out of 14, out of 15, in fact, because we're going to read The Mystery of Edward Drew, which is unfinished at the end, um, and I'm very, very excited to reread this. Before I get going with um, telling you what Dombey and Son is about and why you should read it, um, two things to say. One, I hope you can see me. It's quite sunny today and the light is like very variable. Um, and in my temporary filming space while I'm redecorating um, the room where I usually film, the light is just not great. So I'm sorry if I become blurry at any point um, or um, the sun is shining too much. We're just going to go with it. And also I know that my video kind of reflecting on Martin Chuzzlewit, the last book in the read-along, isn't up yet. Um, I have finished reading Martin Chuzzlewit. I finished reading it a month ago, but between Jane Austen July and redecorating and work um, I am really struggling to find time to film like a slightly longer video. So the video reflecting on Martin Chuzzlewit will be up at some point in August um, but I haven't managed to get around to filming it yet. Um, regardless I thought I would just introduce Dombey and Son today as it's a slightly quicker video um, and the read-along is taking place in August and September so it'd be good for people to get started. So as I just said Dombey and Son is our Mega Dickens read-along book for August and September. There isn't any more of a schedule than that. Basically start when you want, finish when you want within August August and September. Um, I will leave the Discord server um, down below um, if you want to join and take part in the discussion. So, Dombey and Son, what is it about? Um, Dombey and Son, um, as I often like to say, is not about Mr. Dombey and not about Mr. Dombey's son. It is chiefly about Mr. Dombey's daughter. Um, it is about her relationship with Mr. Dombey and with her brother. But it is it is heart, the book about Florence Dombey. Dombey and Son is the name of Mr. Dombey's business. And Mr. Dombey loves his business above everything. Um, and so the key kind of focus of Mr. Dombey's life is to keep his business going and to pass his business on to his son. And Dombey and Son begins with the birth of Paul Dombey, Mr. Dombey's son, um, when Florence is six years old. Um, and we see quite early on that Mr. Dombey values his son um, and has no value at all for his daughter. The book takes place over many years. We see Florence in her childhood. We see her grow up into a young woman. I say that the book is about Florence Dombey, but it is a big book with a lot of characters and a lot of subplots. And we follow a lot of other individuals who are all kind of tied up in some way with Florence Dombey or with the company Dombey and Son. I am very, very excited to reread Dombey and Son um, because Dombey and Son is my second favourite Dickens and I love it very, very, very much. Um, it is one of my favourite books of all time. It would be easily in my top five um, and maybe in my top three depending on the day <laughs> um, and I just I just love it very 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 much I have such a great love for it and I also feel like it's really underrated so I'm very excited to reread it but I'm also very excited for other people to read it. I was trying to think of how many times I've read Dombey and Son before I think I probably read it at least five or six times before so this is probably my sixth or seventh read um I guess. I'm going to be listening to Dombey and Son on audiobook as I have been with all of the books I'm rereading for the Mega Dickens read long and I'm going to be listening to the audiobook on Audible that is part of the Audible um, Dickens collection narrated by Owen Teal. This is one of the audiobooks um, in the Dickens collection that I have actually listened to before and it is a really really great audiobook. Owen Teal is fantastic um, all the voices are really really good especially the voice of Mr Toots. Oh it's so good. Um, very 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 well voice acted um, and really really great so I really really recommend the audiobook. That's what I'm going to be listening to and I'm really looking forward to listen to it again. So I have for you today 10 reasons why you should read Don Me and Son. Like, yes, I have 10 reasons today. Previously, I have usually had between four and six reasons of why you should read a Dickens book, but I have 10 reasons why you should read Don Me and Son because it is excellent. And also there's several individual characters who I wanted to mention. So the first reason why you should read Don Me and Son is that it is, in my opinion, a turning point in Dickens's career. Like, from here on, Dickens gets really, 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 really good. Um, I have previously said that in general, I tend to prefer Dickens's later books to his earlier books. Um, and for me, Dombey and Son is definitely the point where the change happens and where Dickens gets like absolutely amazing. Um, like Dombey and Son is fantastic. Like I said, it's my second favorite Dickens novel and my 
first favourite is um, his last finished novel, I'll Meet Your Friend. Um, and I think in general, the books of, in the second half of his career are stronger, but Dombey and Son is like so good and is also where it gets really good. So in the Mega Dickens read-along, we have already read six Dickens novels. We've read The Pickwick Papers, Oliver Twist, Nicholas Nickleby, um, The Old Curiosity Shop, Barnaby Rudge and Martin Chuzzlewit. And I love all of those books, um, especially Barnaby Rudge, which is like a surprise and new favourite from um, the Mega Dickens read-along, which I just loved on a third read more than ever before. But anyway, Anyway, and I do love all those books, but I do think they are less strong than the books Dickens wrote in the second half of his career. Um, and we're now through the difficult patch and we're now on like firm, solid, amazing ground. Dombey and Son is so good. And from here on, it just gets amazing. Um, so I think Dombey and Son is really worth reading because I think it is like, it's a wonderful book. And it's a real like turning point in Dickens's career where I think he suddenly gets like, to be this amazing writer that he is. Um, and yeah, I just love it very much. The second reason why you should read Dombey and Son is that it has a very wonderful plot. At the heart of this book, we have Florence's coming of age story, but there are also a lot of other subplots in it. And I think the plotting in Dombey and Son is really, really great. I think it's really well paced. I think the subplots are fantastic. I think the way all the different plot lines interweave is really, really good. Um, and I just really, really, really love the plot. I think it is very well plotted. And you know, it's a long book, but like, it's so worth it. We have been saying throughout the Mega Dickens read-along, plotting is something that maybe Dickens' earlier books are not the strongest on. Um, and I think by Dommy and Son, he really knew what he was doing in terms of plot. Another thing I love about Dommy and Son is the tonal balance within it. Um, it is very funny at points, but it also gets very, very dark and it is a very, very emotional book. I would say that Dommy and Son is maybe the most like moving and powerful of all of Dickens' books. Um, definitely it has within it the scene which I think has made me cry the most in all of Dickens and I find it a really really moving book um, specific scenes and specific events are very very moving but also the way this book as a whole looks at grief and loneliness um, is really really great um, and Florence is is very very lonely kind of throughout her life um, as I already mentioned the book starts with um, the birth of her brother and then her mother dies in childbirth um, and Florence has a fairly lonely existence um, because of her father's neglect of her and I feel like the way this book looks at loneliness is very powerful um, and in general like the yeah the tonal balance and the mixture of the really fun comic moments with sort of glorious strange characters um and also the really powerful moments it's just fantastic so yeah I love that about it too. The next three reasons why you should read Don and Son are all characters, um, but I wanted to name these characters specifically, so I thought I would pull them out. Um, so one thing you should read Don and Son for is Mr. Toots and Susan Nipper, who are two wonderful characters um, who sort of form an alliance and become friends later on in the book. Um, Mr. Toots is a school friend of Florence's brother Paul, um, and Susan Nipper is Florence's maid. Um, and I really enjoy both Mr. Toots and Susan Nipper. They have a sort of similar role in the book, one for Paul and one for Florence, in that they're both um, these very eccentric minor characters who are absolutely hilarious, but also have like such good hearts um, that you really, really love them. I really enjoy both Mr. Toots and Susan Nipper and I feel like they have a great balance actually, you know, talking about the tonal balance of the book as a whole, um, there's also a great tonal balance in certain characters like Mr. Toots and Susan Nipper where they are very comic characters in many ways because they're quite eccentric and exaggerated as some of Dickens's wonderful characters are, but also they have like really strong powerful emotions and attachment to other characters um, which mean we kind of really love them too and they're really endearing, um, so I really like them both and I thought I would mention them. Another pair of characters that I think you should read Dombey and Son for are Solomon Gills and Captain and Cuttle. So Solomon Gills is the uncle of a boy called Walter um, and Walter I did mention in the opening description but Walter is another important character in Dombey and Son. Um, he's about Florence's age and they meet early on and become friends um, and Walter works in a very sort of junior capacity at Dombey and Son and Walter has been raised by his uncle Solomon Gills and also partly by his uncle's friend Captain Cuttle um, who doesn't live with them but comes very very regularly um, and Walter definitely views both of them as father figures. And I firmly believe that Solomon Gills and Captain Cuttle are in love. For me, that is there in the subtext, whether Dickens intended it or not. Regardless of what you think about that, um, definitely Solomon Gills and Captain Cuttle have kind of raised Walter together. And this um, sort of non-nuclear, irregular family structure is a really like nice element that I really enjoy in Dombey and Son. Um, so yeah, I wanted to mention them too. Another wonderful pair of characters to read Dombey and Son for. And the sixth reason why you should read Dombey and Son. To be honest, the main reason why should read Dombey and Son is the character of Edith. Edith is the most interesting female character in all of Dickens. In fact, 
Edith is the most interesting character in all of Dickens, in my opinion. I think I would go so far as to say that. Edith is the most interesting character in all of Dickens, and I think she is fantastic. Um, and I said the most interesting female character because, as I'll talk about in a minute, um, gender's a really important theme in Dombey and Son, and Edith is very, very vital to the way um, that Dickens is writing about gender and writing about the position of women in Dombey and Son. And I think Edith is fantastic. Um, she is an amazing character who has some amazing proto-feminist speeches um, in the book. I'm not going to talk about the role Edith has in the plot because she doesn't come in until a little bit later on and I don't want to give any spoilers, but Edith is an amazing, amazing character and, like, you should just read Dombey and Son for Edith because, yeah, she is amazing and fantastic and fascinating. I've realised that my seventh reason for reading um, Dombey and Son is actually another character and that is um, the villain of Dombey and Son. Dombey and Son has a very, very excellent villain who I won't name because I don't think it's necessarily immediately clear who the villain is. Um, but the villain of Dombey and Son is very, very, very excellent. I'm not going to say any more than that, but yeah, another reason worth reading Dombey and Son for. The final three reasons why you should read Dombey and Son are all themes, but I wanted to separate them out because they're really important themes and ones that are really interesting. And so one very important theme in Dombey and Son is the theme of money and business. As I already said, Dombey and Son is the name of Mr. Dombey's company, and he really, really values this company and money not for what it can buy, not for what it can do, but for the sake of being money and for the sake of being successful within Victorian capitalist terms, I suppose. Dombey and Son came out in the late 1840s, um, very much like in the middle of the 19th century, where there is this kind of ongoing shift of power from sort of landed gentry and aristocratic interests towards business and manufacturing and mercantile interest. Mr. Dombey is a businessman um, who owns a very valuable business and who makes money and this is something that is really important to his sense of self and to his sense of pride, I suppose. And the way this book looks at the theme of money and business and through it the theme of power is just something I find fascinating in Dombey and Son. And it's a theme that um, crops up in other Dickens novels later. I'm thinking especially of Little Dorrit and Our Mutual Friend. And it's a theme I really, really love in his work. Another really important theme in Dombey and Son is a theme of family and kind of different family dynamics. Um, I've already mentioned a few different families that we find in Dombey and Son. Um, we have the complicated relationships between Florence and um, her father who doesn't love her and her brother. Florence and her brother have a really close sibling relationship um, but Florence's father obviously favours her brother so much over her um, and doesn't really even regard Florence as a person. And the complicated family dynamics there and the criticism of Victorian sort of family structures there are really really interesting. Then we also have the sort of um, irregular family setup, the sort of found family that we have between Walter um, Solomon Gills and Captain Cussell. And there are various other family setups that we have in the book. Um, Edith's relationship with her mother is horrid and complicated and we have various sibling relationships and other parent-child relationships and the way the kind of book looks at family in general, parenthood and siblinghood um, and so much more is just amazing and yeah. Oh, it's such a good book, Dombey and Son. I'm so excited to reread it. Anyway, number 10, the final reason why you should read Dombey and Son is that Dombey and Son is a truly, truly fascinating novel in terms of gender. The theme of gender is really, really at the heart of Dombey and Son. There are lots of things to do with gender that Dombey and Son is exploring. Um, the book looks quite interestingly at their kind of position of the fallen woman within Victorian society. It looks at power dynamics and power inequalities in marriage, but it also looks very much at the kind of problems with the traditional Victorian ideals of masculinity. Um, so Mr. Dombey in the book basically basically kind of embodies all of the sort of Victorian ideals about masculinity. You know, Mr. Dombey is a kind of emotionally repressed man who values his business above all else, who values his son above his daughter, and who mostly values his son because his son is going to take over his business. Mr. Dombey is unemotional and driven by money and pride, um, and he kind of sums up like the Victorian idea of what is good for a man to be. And it's awful. And Dickens is very much saying it's awful. And, and the way Mr. Dombey treats his daughter is bad for Florence and is bad for Mr. Dombey. And Charles Dickens is really kind of criticising the ideals of Victorian masculinity in Dombey and Son. Um, in many ways, Dombey and Son is set up as a kind of battle between masculinity and femininity, um, or traditional Victorian ideas of masculinity and femininity. Like, it's a fairly, like, um, stereotyped binary of the Victorian period, but, like, it's still really, really interesting to look at. Mr. 
Dombey kind of represents traditional Victorian masculinity um, and Florence kind of represents traditional Victorian femininity. Florence is driven by kind of emotion and affection and then her father is driven by sort of money and what he views as sense. Um, and basically in this battle, Florence is clearly the superior one. Um, and this is just fascinating. And this is one of the things that I love about Dombey and Son. There's a lot more I could say about gender in Dombey and Son. Um, as I've already mentioned, one of the kind of threads running through the book is this criticism Dickens has on um, Victorian society placing more value on um, men in general, but especially on male children over female children. I did make a feminist Victorians video on this a while back, which I'll link down below, um, where I spoke a lot more about these things. Um, I think the first half is spoiler free, um, and I'm sure I will have a lot to say about Dobby and Sam when I finish reading it. But yes, I'm just... I'm just very, very, very fond of Dombey and Son. I love it a lot and I can't wait to um, reread it again. So yes, please do let me know down in the comments. Are you joining in with the read-along this time? You should. If you only read like one or two books from the Mega Dickens read-along, please make one of them Dombey and Son. It is so good. Um, I'm very, 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 very excited to reread it. And yes, I think that's all. I think I've rambled on for quite long enough. So thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Mm -hmm.